Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to look for the maximum item in a list, and to apply that concept to finding the biggest pumpkin in a list of pumpkin sizes. Alright, let's get going! In this assignment, we're going to find the biggest pumpkin in a list of pumpkin weights. The skills we're going to need are we're going to need to be able to loop through lists, we're going to use if statements inside those loops, and we're going to use functions with returns. This time around, rather than just giving you the solution, I'm going to do a code that's very, very similar. I'm going to give you a code that finds the minimum number in a list. One of the things in computer science is finding a problem that looks kind of like yours and then applying the concepts that you learn there to solve your problem. So that's what I'm hoping that you pick up from this. Again, I'm giving you the code to find the minimum in a list of numbers, and you're going to use these concepts to write a code that finds the maximum in a list of numbers. All right, so let's start this out. I'm going to name my list numbers. The S at the end helps me remember that it's plural, and lists are plural. I'm going to name my list plural, which will help me keep my code organized in my head. So the next thing I'm going to do is loop through this list. So to do that, I'm going to use a for loop. I'm basically following a formula, which is for singular in plural. For singular in plural. You've already done a mini lab where you've seen the for loop work, but let's just see one more time how it works. So number right here is going to be a temporary variable that changes each time I go through the loop. At the very beginning, number will equal to 2. I'll run this print part of the code, which is inside the loop. After I'm done with the code inside the loop, I'll go back to the top of the loop. And now my temporary variable number will equal to 56, and I'll start that loop again. I'll go to the print. Number is 56. It will print 56. And then I'm done with the code in the loop. So then I go back to the top of the loop. My temporary variable number is this time it's going to be equal to 1. I'll enter the loop, print number, which is 1. I'm all done with the loop, and so on and so forth. Here's the plan. I'm going to create a variable that stands for the minimum item in my list. I'm going to loop through the list and check them one by one. If the one that I'm checking is less than my minimum, well, I have a new minimum. So let's program that right now. So what I'm going to do is assign a minimum right away. So I'll say minimum is equal to 9999999999999. And you may ask, Dr. Wu, why are you doing that? And here's why. I'm going to set my minimum to something really, really high at the beginning. And as I step through the list, remember my first one I'm checking is 2. That's going to be less than the minimum. Now we'll have found my new minimum. Another way I can do this is to go to minimum is equal to numbers bracket 0. Of, so that sets my minimum equal to the zeroth item of the list. All right, so let's see how this works. So as I loop through the items in the list, I'm going to check to see if the number that I'm currently on is less than my minimum. And if it is, I'm going to reset my minimum. So the code to do that will look something like this. If number, and again, this is the number that I'm currently on in the list, is less than minimum, then I'm going to reset my minimum. And what am I going to reset the minimum to? The number that I'm currently on. And just to see if it works, I'm going to print the minimum at the end. Comment this out. If this works, I expect that my minimum at the end will be 1. And it is. So let's talk through this a little bit. Let's start at line 4 of my code. 4 number in numbers. So number will be equal to 2. Now I'm entering the loop. If number is less than minimum, well, number is 2. Minimum is 9999, something really, really big. So the Boolean expression is true. And when the Boolean expression is true, we run the code associated with the if. And that code sets minimum equal to the number. So now minimum is equal to 2. The loop is now over, and we're back to the top of the loop. Now number will go on to the next item in the list, which is 56. Number equals to 56. And then we check the if. If 56, which is number, is less than the minimum, which is 2, well, it's not. So it doesn't do the code in the if. Now the code in the loop is done. So it goes back to the top of the loop for number and numbers. Number is now equal to 1. If number is less than the minimum, so if 1 is less than 2, it is, then I'm resetting the minimum. So the minimum is now equal to 1. So basically it repeats just like this until I loop over the other items in the list. At the end, minimum is equal to 1. Now you don't have to do it this way. You can use a built-in function, min, just like print or input. Those are built-in functions. And that could do it for you in one line. And you'll see it gives the same result, but we're asking you to do it by looping through the list manually. Now, what would I do if I wanted to put this inside a function? Well, I might do something like this. First, I'll make my function. So remember, a function is def, function name. So min item, I'll call it, parentheses, colon. 
inside the parentheses go my parameters. And in this case, I just want one parameter, which is the list of numbers. I will call this parameter p underscore numbers. I'll copy all of this stuff into the function. Everywhere I have the variable numbers, I'll need to change that to p numbers. If I don't do that, I can get some hard to debug errors. So I'm going to be sure to name my function variables differently from how they're named outside the function. Finally, I need to call my function. If you're a beginner, then I recommend when you see a function with a return, call it as if you call input or as if you call length. So I'm going to do variable is equal to the function, the parentheses. Then I see that this has a parameter, which means that this has to have an argument. And now I can use this variable. And as you see, it gives me one, which is the same as before. I can change the numbers around. And you can see it still works, even though I've given it different numbers. All right, so the problem we're asking you to do is actually not a minimum item. It's a maximum item. And so the trick for you is to recognize what's the same and what's different. So what might that be? Well, for one, I'm going to change the name of my function. It's not going to be min item anymore. I also have to change the name of my variable. Again, that can be done in Replit with F2. So I'll select it. I'm going to hit F2, and I can rename variables. Finally, there is one more change you need to make. I'm not going to tell you what that is. I'll leave it to you. Finally, I'm going to show you the number one far and away mistake that people make. The number one mistake that people do is this. They're in the function, and then they set the value of this list, and that's bad. That is something they do not want to do. Why? Well, it sets this list right here, meaning that this function will only work with this particular list. And that's not what I want. I want this function to be able to work with anything that I send into it. When I do this, I'm hard coding what my function will run on. So if I try to run my function with this list here, it won't work because the parameter will be overwritten. And if I try to run it with this list here, it still won't work because the parameter will be overwritten. Don't define this list inside of your function. Do not do this. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.